science. It's one of those things that's been the same for thousands and thousands of years and never changes. Scientific laws and theories are foolproof, right? Wrong. Let's talk about something called phlogiston. <laughs> Phlogiston was an 18th century scientific theory that was trying to explain combustion or why some things were flammable, some, why some things weren't flammable, and what caused something to light on fire. The idea was that things that are flammable were full of phlogiston, and the more flammable something was, the more phlogiston it contained. When you lit something on fire, all of the phlogiston would run out of the material. And that's what you see as a flame. So as the material burns, all of the phlogiston is released, which means the resulting ash or material left behind after something burned would be lighter because it was the original material minus the phlogiston would result in a lighter material. Ooh. Air was also really important in combustion for the removal of phlogiston. So air would absorb all the extra phlogiston and allow our fire to carry on. When you covered a flame, the air would fill with phlogiston and the flame would go out. One other important part about the phlogiston theory was that if you heated up a metal, it would form what was called a calx. And that calx would have to be less than the original weight of the metal. Because again, you had the metal minus the phlogiston equals the calx. So the original weight of the metal minus the weight of the phlogiston would equal the weight of the calx. So both the ash that was formed during a fire and the calx formed from heating a metal and releasing the phlogiston had to be lighter than the original materials. Clearly this sounds a little crazy to us because we're really familiar with today's theory of combustion about oxygen. But if you think about back to the 18th century, these people didn't know what was in air. They had no idea what oxygen was. Oxygen hadn't been discovered yet and they didn't know what caused things to catch on fire. So the phlogiston theory explained a lot of what they were observing in scientific experiments. But there were also a lot of inconsistencies. So there were a lot of results in scientific experiments that didn't fit within the phlogiston theory. But scientists either thought they were wrong because the almighty phlogiston theory is correct, it is immovable, or they would kind of slightly fudge the results a little bit to fit within that existing theory. Because overall, the phlogiston theory could explain more things than it couldn't explain. And there wasn't a better option yet to explain everything regarding combustion. For example, when people measured a piece of metal that had been heated to form a calx, which is really rust by the way, that material would actually weigh more than the original material because it wasn't metal minus phlogiston equals calx, it was metal plus something equaled rust. But people just kind of dismissed that. That was one of the results that were like, yeah, it's something we don't entirely know. In addition, if you were to weigh a balloon that is full of air, helium, or hydrogen versus an empty balloon, you would be like, hey, it's the air plus, or the balloon plus air is going to be heavier than just the balloon itself. If you were to put those on an actual scale, you would see that the balloon filled with air actually weighs less than just a normal balloon because that air is providing some buoyancy which is pulling up on that scale. So these are the type of measurements that didn't quite fit in with phlogiston theory, but kind of fit in, or at least could be made to fit in. So why not just stick with it? And this all changed with a scientist named Antoine Lavoisier. He was French, again, you can always tell they're French by their name. That is hard and probably being pronounced wrong by me. <laughs> and he was doing all of these experiments with sulfur and phosphorus and burning them and seeing what happened. And he kept coming over and over again to the same conclusion. If I burn these things, they weigh more or they weigh approximately the same after they're burned to when before they're burned. So what is going on? And around this time, he met a scientist, an English scientist named Joseph Priestley, who was doing some experiments with mercury calx, again, mercury oxide. And he discovered that when he burned the mercury calx, it released a gas that caused a flame to burn brighter. Again, we know now today that this is oxygen and oxygen is really important for flames, but he didn't know this. 
and he called it dephlogisticated air, aka oxygen, which is what Antoine Lavoisier would eventually name it after conducting similar experiments of his own. And once oxygen was discovered, a new theory was put forth from Antoine Lavoisier called the oxygen theory. The idea that oxygen, not phlogiston, was very important in combustion, and when oxygen combined with the material would be able to catch on fire, oxygen helped increase the flame content, and if a flame was covered, then oxygen was the reason, the lack of oxygen was the reason for why it went out. And if you heated up a metal and combined it with oxygen, it formed a calx, or what became known as an oxide, aka a rust iron oxide, that is rust on iron. So everything, including the language of chemistry, all became based, at least in combustion, became based around oxygen in this theory. And that's the theory that we still adopt today and explains a lot of, all of our experimental observations about combustion so far. But who knows? Maybe we're wrong about that. Maybe we're wrong about like the entire periodic table. We could be wrong about so many things and we just haven't discovered it yet. And that to me is like one of the really cool things about science. So we learned about all these laws and theories in science class and growing up and just kind of the world, but one day they can all come crashing down, which is one important discovery. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video about the phlogiston theory. Go tell all your friends about it. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, check me out on Instagram. I post every Friday and keep it sciencey. When you let something on, Freaking fire! And when you lit, when you lit something on fire, when you lit something on fire, the phlogiston escaped. When you lit something on fire, you put something on fire. When you lit something on fire, when you lit something on fire.